Well, Chapter 164 is here, and Aqua's fate is pretty much official now. We get to see Aqua's final moments and the reactions of some of the other characters finally. It really does feel like the series is near its end for real now, and after this chapter, there are only two chapters left. But yeah, I'm gonna just get started with this one, which opens with some panels showing that Bikomachi's performance has finally ended, with the seats now empty and the staff clear in the area. Meanwhile, Kana looks like she's been running around looking for Aqua, asking people like Memcho. Poor Kana is blushing, but she has no idea Aqua skipped her own performance to go get himself killed instead. Like bro would rather die than see Kana's final performance. Actually tragic. As for Ruby, she's talking with a little girl and her mother. Of course, the little girl wants an autograph, and it's sweet to see how excited people are to see Ruby. Ruby seems like she's in a good mood, but in contrast to that simple panel, we cut directly to the dark sky and ocean where her brother is currently drowning. Bro is clearly suffering, going off the pain noises and the expression he's making. In his mind, Aqua says that he's in pain, and that it's so cold and dark. He's actually trying to breathe, or at least his body is, which is trying its best to live. The pain and suffering is so unbearable to Aqua, that he's practically begging to die already. At this point, it feels like it's taken too long, which is insane. He really chose one of the worst ways to die. It's ironic too if you remember the question kind of asked at chapter 108. She asked how Aqua would prefer to die with three scenarios. Pushed into a pit of tarantulas, shot by a machine gun, and crushed by a meteorite. Aqua chose the meteorite one, which is the least painful option. One where he'd die instantly. Yet in reality, Aqua ended up suffering a slow, cold, and painful death in the darkness all alone. One of the most brutal deaths ever. Not bloody, but just very painful in multiple ways. However, a bright star shines over the empty stadium as the Bikomachi trio sings for fun inside. And somehow, Aqua suddenly feels like he can hear their singing. At least, that's what Aqua thought he heard. While the girls are messing around, Aqua takes his last breaths and can finally rest. Then we finally see the dead body of Aqua Oshino, who died with a smile on his face. Very bittersweet. It sucks that he died like this, but at least Aqua died happy and was able to fulfill his desire to protect Ruby. Then back on the cliffside, we can see the moon shining over Akari's phone still on the ground. With that, we're now officially in the final act of the story. Some time seems to pass and we can see the bustle on City, as well as the 15 year line movie being advertised all over. Akane then begins narrating the rest of the story, Aqua will never see himself. We can see Akane walk out on a beach with some flowers, as she explains that his body ended up being discovered by a fisherman 20 kilometers, or nearly 12 to 13 miles away from the actual scene of the crime. There wasn't that much damage to Aqua's body, besides the stab wound and it was mostly preserved thanks to the coldness of the winter sea. If Bro lived, he would actually be Captain America, which is kind of funny, but instead his body was fished out of the sea and it became a huge new story, and we could finally see Kana and everyone else's reactions. Of course, everyone is completely shocked by the news, especially Kana, and Akane continues by saying, most of the news said it was a sad story because Akari resented his own son to the point of wanting to kill him. However, Akane knows the real truth, and we see her laying a flower to rest on the beach by the water. Then we get a brief flashback to the last time we saw Akane and Aqua speak, which was after Akane cut her hair. It's here where Aqua tells Akane that he wants to bring this all to a close. So during that time, presumably when he's with the Karu, Aqua asks Akane to protect Ruby. Yet Akane knows that it was actually Aqua who protected Ruby and wanted to ensure the safety of Ruby's future. That's why Aqua killed Akaru and then himself. Akane even believed Aqua would come back for sure. When they spoke, Aqua seemed to have the face of someone who wanted to live and see the future. From Akane's perspective, Aqua had the face of someone who didn't want to die. Akane questions why Aqua didn't want to let her help him. If that was his plan, Akane would have been willing to help plan the perfect crime together with Aqua. She was really prepared to become a murderer. Then the chapter ends with one last page of Akane heartbroken on the beach, as she says that she would have even gone to hell, as long as it was with Aqua. And that's a great callback to what Akane said back in chapter 98, when they broke up. And Aqua's response is exactly why he didn't take Akane's help now. Yet after all that, even if Akane no longer romantically loved Aqua, she still deeply cared about him and remained committed to the end. I feel like with that one panel alone, you could see the pain she's in. But I do think Aqua knew what he was doing. He slowly gave Akane another task to keep her occupied, which would have been pretty smart of him. If her mind hadn't been too focused on Nino, perhaps Akane could have seen through Aqua's deception or at least been concerned enough to head to his location, immediately after stopping Nino. In the end, Aqua did not want Akane to become a murderer for his sake, or get her into any sort of trouble, which explains why he kept her away. Now as for Ruby, 
It was surprising that we didn't see her reaction in this chapter. But I also think she does deserve like a whole chapter dedicated to her grieving and dealing with the funeral for Aqua too. Speaking of Ruby though, I think my main issue with this death is that Aqua didn't seem to consider Ruby's feelings on the matter, besides that one remark last chapter, acknowledging he left his sister behind. For some reason, Aqua didn't consider the fact that while Ruby will still be safe from her father, there are still other psycho fans out there who could still want to harm her. Yeah, on top of that, Ruby will be devastated after hearing her reason for living is dead. Aqua is the one who pulled her out of the darkness by revealing he was Goro, and now his tragic death might push her back into it. Bro's plan to keep Ruby safe could actually massively backfire. Ruby's depression could not only harm her career, but also her own life too. Of course, this will all depend on Ruby's reaction, which we still need to see. That was like my only issue though, as I actually did like Aqua went through with Aqua's death, and it added some real stakes to the story. Overall, it was a great way to end Aqua's own character arc. From the start, revenge was his purpose, but as he developed as Aqua, his goal became to protect Ruby and those that he cares about. Yet, as a soul from the past, perhaps it was time for him to finally move on, after doing everything he could do for those still living. I'm sure a lot of people will hate this, but I like this character overall, besides how he didn't seem to think about Ruby's feelings. Anyways, those are pretty much my thoughts on this so far, but of course, I really want to see what y'all think of Aqua's death too, as well as what Ruby will do now. Let me know in the comments and as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. I got some more Shoko Kata here too that you can check out. Peace.